Good morning. Good morning, and a beautiful morning out there after a rainstorm last night. You guys made it through the storm, and uh, it wasn't that bad, was it? I don't think so. A lot of wind. Good morning. Good morning out there after. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Another storm. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I was called to the hospital and to go to Sheboygan last night, so on my way there, I was uh, I was afraid there was going to be a, a just a, a a nasty drive and for a little bit it was so like there were parts of the highway where like you're you're driving and then you feel the the, the car moving and sometimes where there's bottles of water i was like oh no i'm gonna get stuck in here i felt like i needed to get out and lift the car and, <laughs> and walk around but it, it wasn't too bad on the way back it was it was mostly clear so mm -hmm. it was it was good, not, good. Not, not as bad as a as i thought it was gonna be uh, a tro tropical uh a tropical storm. Is that, was, is that yes, what? Yes, yes. Okay. Only second and third time ever that that's happened. Yeah, made it that far north. Recorded history yeah, that it came that far north. Yeah. So you're to remember, huh? No, I watched the news last night and they told me that's what that's what they. Well, yeah, it's no, a year I mean, to remember. Year, yeah. with everything happening in yeah, yeah. history. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to. It's going to be weird. It'll happen this year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there's so many things that could happen, but. Uh, Agreed. No special guests this morning, sorry. It's just us. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> no, nothing. You're sure special, Father Bill. Were, You're always special. People were looking for, we've had so many good special guests, and they look like, oh, it's just them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, hopefully that's not the case. But uh, yeah. um, today we wanted to, uh, I, I don't know if you've, if you've been reading or following the daily readings for the first reading this whole week. They've been quite powerful, quite moving. Uh, the prophet Elijah and uh, his trust in the Lord and how he was able to discern the voice of God, to be obedient to it. And like the, the miracles that happened because of that. Uh, Monday, we, we heard about the, the ravens, right? Bringing uh, meat and bread to Elijah. And then yesterday, we, we heard about... Uh, and now I'm drawing blank. Uh, the woman widow. The, the widow. That's right. The, the widow. I preached on it. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today, if you went already to mass, you heard or will hear down the uh, later on about the the fire that, that comes from above to consume the offering of of Elijah. Um, tomorrow's a memorial, but Friday is another beautiful story about uh, uh, our Lord speaking to Moses through through the whispering of the wind. And it was not in the storm, it was not in the, in the loudness, it was in the silence of the whispering. So there's, there's something about this week about Elijah and just, uh, I think it's the Lord inviting us to truly ponder in that the trust that he had, the love for God, the solace uh, that he had for, for, for God himself and that he was not afraid of going against the world. Because at one point it was almost just, I think, I think it was the only uh, prophet against the, the land of Baal and, and all the their prophets. And so that's part of the story today where he, later on, he slaughtered like all 450 of them. Yes. So, it's, so that's what we want to talk about, not about the slaughtering, but we want to talk about the, the, the beauty of uh, Elijah. And there's a beautiful uh, connection with Mount Carmel today with uh, Carmelites, right? That uh, uh, they claim their, their founder was all the way back to, to Elijah's time, or mm -hmm. the, at least the Old Testament. So we'll talk about that. Absolutely. So it's quite, quite moving, like hearing the stories of, of uh, Elijah this week. Like there, you, you read them and you. Well, this this uh, image of, of Elijah by himself going up against the the prophets of Baal and seemingly, uh, uh, you know, an outgunned, outnumbered situation, and it should ring a bell for all of us because we in this day when it seems as if we're being outmanned, outgunned, out, out everything by, by, the, by the waves and the, uh, the darkness and uh, the dark minions of the world, that somehow anybody who is a child of the light is, is just at a disadvantage and that there's, uh, there's, there's nothing we can do uh, other than to just either capitulate or keep our heads down and ride it out. And, Holy Scripture tells us otherwise that um, that when we place our our uh, not only our trust but that when when we become 
zealous participants in, in the will of, of the one God, um, uh, the minions of, of darkness uh, have absolutely uh, no chance. And this story um, is, is a, should be um, not only a reminder, but it should be extremely uh, motivating to us, uh, especially in this time when it seems as if uh, the uh, uh, lots of prophets of Baal running around. Absolutely, and well, what we started like the, from the one on Monday. To, given I don't know if it's it, it's not coincidental. I think it's 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 just how this year is landing within the week of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi, the body and blood of our Lord, is coming up this this weekend, and. On Monday, we hear about the ravens bringing bread and and and, and meat to feed uh, Elijah, and I don't know if there's a connection there with the Eucharist, but there's definitely there seems to be that uh, a story that that our Lord asked him to first give him that message of of proclaiming a drought that that there was not going to be rain until God spoke it until God willed it. And he was asked to go into the desert, into a different area where he was going to be fed by ravens. And then the, there's going to be a, a, a water from a stream that he was going to be able to drink from. So all this themes of... Um, but we also have to <clears throat> put a little background to it and understand that um, just like in our day, if you didn't like what the prophet had to say, then you killed him. And that was, that was sort of the, the mode of operation in Israel for the longest time. Uh, the prophets would come and go and speak the word of God, and the people did not want to hear the word of God. And therefore, when you don't want to hear it, there's no, there's no civil debate. You just off with him, off with his head, whatever it takes, kill the prophet. And so Elijah needs to go into, into exile. He needs to go... A way to be protected otherwise he's gonna he's going to have the same fate as so many of the other uh, prophets of ancient Israel and that would be to die at the hands of those who you know if you don't like the message kill the messenger mm. and so the messenger gets protected and and goes to to Mount Carmel for uh, for not only protection but also um, to be able to, to sort of recoup and to listen to what God has in mind for for His ongoing mission. Absolutely, and so the the great um, strength that that should bring upon us, right? That uh, we're not abandoned. That in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of, of the oppression, in the midst of the, that, it seems like the whole world is up against you. Like our Lord, it's there. Our Lord provides. Our Lord gives you that strength. Our Lord gives you what you need to persevere, to move on, and to continue to bring that message into the world in His time. Uh, of Elijah, there's people leading, being led astray by, by the leaders of the time, the corruption all over the place, um, people not knowing the difference between Yahweh and, and the rest of the other gods. Uh, so this sort of like fusion of all the gods and the worship of everything and, and anything. And so that's where the, the zealousness, is that what zealousness? Zealousness. Z Z Z Z yeah. <laughs> comes from right of, of Elijah was like no there's a one true God and we're called to worship and we are his people and our Lord like strengthened him and given him that courage that message and that ability to not be afraid to speak up and then later on to be fed so we see this this Eucharistic uh, motive uh, in the in, on Monday the the bread and the flesh and the 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 drinking of the water from the spring that our Lord was given him. Uh, so this, this gives you this idea of the, the pierced heart of our Lord on the cross, right? That the, the, the heart was pierced and then the, the stream of living water that just sprang from it. All that happens, all that happened in the Old Testament becomes a, a foreshadowing, a, a foretelling of that which will become manifest in the new. And so we have to have eyes that eyes and ears and a mind that that can see forward and and backward and not and not imagine that uh, that that there's no um, continuing no no continuity between between what happens in the new covenant and that which happened in the old uh, 
as we know, the Israelites were constantly in a cycle of, 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 um, of faithfulness, followed by apostasy, followed by, um, followed by a, a true falling away, um, and a, a seeming abandonment, followed by reconciliation, followed by restoration, followed by recommitment, followed, and then it circles around again. And the Israelites did that constantly in the Old Testament, and yet God constantly provided, and the, the absolute holy patience that he had for his people was, was profound, eventually putting flesh on the word so that God could dwell among us and possibly break this this cycle uh, that that the that the created ones were were seemingly engaged in from from all the from the beginning of creation. Mm -hmm. So uh, beautiful, brilliant uh, representation of the of of how we make and break our relationship with God. And the beauty of our of our, our, our story, right? The, that story that. That the Father never ceases to pursue us despite of our, our walking away, despite of us like even turning our backs completely on God and wandering away from the faith that our Lord continues to call prophets, continues to like try to draw our attention to turn back and, and, and return to Him. So He did it through the prophets in the midst of the chaos. He did it in the time of Jesus by sending His Son. And He wants to do it now. Uh, in the when you think about it, we're not that different from the time of, of, of Elijah. Um, there's confusion in the faith. Uh, there's people claiming not to believe in God. People claiming that God does not exist. People claiming that one is the same as the other. It just um, it seems to be a time of confusion, of, of chaos, and the violence that we're, we're, we're experiencing today. So that idea that our Lord continues to call us to be strengthened by Him, to be fed by Him, and to not be afraid of, of speak for Him. Yeah, I mean, you ask the, one can rightly ask the, the, the basic question, um, what happens to humanity without, um, without God or without a recognition of, of a relationship with God? Well, we've, we've answered it for centuries for, from, from all time of the creation that as soon as we turn our back on God, then we lose all sense of order, all sense of direction, all sense of purpose, and what happens? Chaos, absolute chaos. And, and then when the chaos becomes so overwhelming that there's no other place to go, then uh, a handful of, uh, of those who have apostatized somehow have a metanoia, have a turning around, and then there is a, a rekindling of relationship, and then that spawns a, an even wider rekindling. Um, that which is happening that's chaotic in the world, that is not from God. That is That comes straight from the absence of God, which then we can say is promoted and, and if you will, fired by, uh, by that which is dark, the evil one itself. And so where do we go? Do we just, just pull our hair and tear our clothes and say, it's all hopeless? No. We go to the, to the one who has always been there and the one that we can always turn to. We can go to our own Mount Carmel, if you will, uh, for protection and feeding and, and restoration and strengthening uh, for the battle. And then who wins in the end? Light goodness wins in the end and one seemingly outmanned and outgunned prophet destroys the whole rabble of of uh, of prophets of of the false god Baal mm. and so whenever we feel like we're just about to enter into despair and that that we have no power we actually have the power to to do the work of Elijah particularly in our own family and so, it, it, jumping, doing the work of Elijah, that he did not do it alone. Like, yesterday we heard about the widow who, who had barely enough to eat for one more meal, and then her and her son were, were going to die, and then after that, that was it. But Elijah was helped by 
the ones that were seemed to be like the, the loneliest, the, the lowest in society, the ones that didn't seem to matter much to the rest of society, that our Lord used them to continue on the mission of, of Elijah and to feed them and to continue to strengthen to bring that message to He asked the most desperate, the most desperate that he could find to have faith. And, and they responded. And they he, responded. He asked for their last flour and oil. So the boldness of that woman or the acceptance of that woman is, okay, I'm going to bake that for him. That means my son and I don't eat today. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in the practical matter of it, but yet in faith doing it and God provides for until the next rain or until the next yeah. season. And I think that those little details are the ones that we tend to forget when we just read a story from the past. And like we don't think about the, this little... Or, or little details that are like significant and the the uh, the part of the 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 giver right that it was not just about making someone a bread it was about giving your whole livelihood you're giving your whole like meal for the rest of your life so she thought yeah the woman said said hang on man look I'm just we're just in the death throes here and we're just trying to have just scrape a little bit together so we can have one last little measly meal together and then we're going to die that's the brink of desperation that's the brink of of it's all over it's all done with and you know it, it seems it seems not only it's beyond irony that our lord would send elijah to the most desperate and ask for them to have faith but that's the message that's that that undercurrent of that it's not just the story it's it's the whole undergirding of how, in our eyes, it seems improbable, impossible, that this woman and her son could, could ever say yes to this. And yet they do. And in their faithfulness, um, all that they, uh, beyond even what they could have hoped for, became theirs. You know, I think that what you just said, there's a, there's a spiritual nugget here that... God not only asked the most desperate to have faith, but that in their re reception of that invitation from our Lord, like the fact that in, in, in their desperateness, they were, they said yes to having faith, but in their yes, in their answer, they were able to give life to Elijah. And so when we are in our most desperate times there, I know uh, a lot of our parishioners are struggling with life and death situations. A lot of our family, um, people who are struggling uh, emotionally, psychologically, uh, you name it. There's This whole week, there's been a lot of um, things that have happened. Uh, families, our families that are struggling, that are suffering, that are in despair. And yet this beautiful invitation that our Lord invites us to, to trust, invites them to listen to Him, invites us to cast ourselves into His hands. And in our desperation, in the moments of, of our most difficult times, like our Lord wants to be there for us. And in that moment of desperation, He wants to give life not only to us by believing, but to the people around us. To show the world that He's a life-given God that gives meaning, that gives hope, that gives us our fulfillment. And He asks us to do, as we say, the what seemingly is improbable, and that is to see beyond the normal lens of our humanity. And, and that is, is just a, a moment of, of transcendent vision. And you think, well, that seems, that's, that seems unlikely. Well, it's not. It's not unlikely that if we, if we give ourselves even the opportunity to see beyond our, our base humanity and see into something that is more, more transcendent, more beyond us, then all of a sudden our vision is is widened dramatically and and our ability to respond is is changed mm -hmm. so just that 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 when we talk about a yes sometimes it is the most hesitant yes that you can imagine but it cracks the door just enough that our lord can rush in and, uh, and essentially work a miracle and, and that's it. Like uh, another Eucharistic motive, and, and that reading with the with uh, the widow who uses flour and oil to bake, so almost like that bread, right? That that, that jar never turns, 
no, never runs dry. It's like the heart of our Lord, who it's always filled with, with compassion, with kindness, with mercy. Not just so that we can coast along our lives just trusting in that mercy, but so that His that the power of that love, the power of that mercy transforms us and it not only allows us to coach, but to live, to 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 strive to bring that message of, of, of life, of hope to the people around us. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like a source of, of comfort for us, like, oh, God loves us so much that it just coasts along the, 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 the way here. But that, that, move, that, that love moves us to the point of just surrendering ourselves, surrendering our brokenness, our, our lives, for the Lord to use us to feed those who are around us. So I, I think that it's another beautiful... But the, the, the woman had to act. Yeah. She wasn't just a quivering bowl of jello that, that the Lord through Elijah came in and, 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 and caused her to, to act. In, by her own volition, she had to see, recognize, and, and act. Whether she fully had confidence or believed in what she was doing or not, that, that mustard seed of faith in order to act. And so all of us are called not to just sit quivering, but in response to the prompting of the Holy Spirit to act in yeah. some way. And speaking of the prompting of the Holy Spirit, it brings us to today's reading, the, the offering or, or the testing of the gods to see whose God was the real God and the prophets of Baal who were preparing their altar and, and asking, Father Doc, you were making a good uh, uh, impression of what that must have looked like. Taunting, taunting. You know, come on, 450 uh, uh, prophets of Baal. You know, more wood. What's wrong? He's not coming. You're not loud enough. You know, they're slitting themselves. You know, not enough blood, not enough blood. And then when it's his turn, oh, put a couple buckets of water on here. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay, here we go. Whoosh. And it burns just like that. It's a, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the true God, right? That, that, sends that, that, that sends that fire to consume that offering. And so again, we see another like Eucharistic uh, motive there. That it is in that offering of the altar, it is in that offering that we give God at every Mass, and the power of the Holy Spirit comes and, and receives that offering and brings it up to our Lord. And the power that, that God was able to display, to He displayed His majesty, His grandeur, His just His almighty power upon the, the, the calling, a single calling of Elijah upon the altar to prove that He was indeed the true God. The God of Israel, the God of the world. It's all, one of the little sub details there is that these prophets of Baal, in all of their their frittering around and their dancing and their screaming and their yelling, it is not um, random that that they that they um, slit, themselves. slit themselves, and their blood is of no avail. The shedding of their blood is no avail. And we should always keep that in mind when we believe that somehow we can take on, I mean, we, not so individually, but as humanity, and all these movements within humanity that make an effort and have made an effort over the centuries to, uh, to, be, to create this, um, this, demigod-like fellowship of humanity that that we can can declare our own godliness and manifest our own godliness among ourselves and therefore um, as if if we were to shed our own blood for each other that that would have that that would have sacrificial meaning and would be and would be of, of some merit from the very beginning we can we can slash ourselves and and shed our own blood uh, in an effort to to declare our own uh, our own the, the godliness of humanity uh, and and we're not talking about modeling after the true God we're talking about declaring humanity itself as God um, our the shedding of our blood is to no avail and there it is and so. John 3.16 loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that the shedding of his blood was the ultimate and true sacrifice. 
that uh, that is our that is our saving grace. Mm. And, and it's beautiful how, like at, at every liturgy, at every mass, uh, like all these motives come together. The 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 feeding of the the I don't say the ravens, right? But the feeding uh, of Elijah, like we are fed by the the body and blood of our Lord. That um, we are fed by His heart that never runs dry. That He's constantly giving, pouring Himself upon us. And that at every mass, is the fire of the Spirit comes upon the altar to consume our offering, uh, to to take it and, and and elevate it to our Lord. And and, and in that process, like it, it feeds us, it restores us, it pours Himself upon us. Uh, so the one true God that we're called to, like place our, our our hope, our faith in God alone, and not in our strength, like you're you're, you're saying. Um, so before we we run out, there's a. Um, before we not run out of time, right? Because uh, the, there's this detail that they were assembling on Mount Carmel, and uh, you got a love for for the Carmelites. And uh, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, the, the the Carmelite connection sure. with the Mount Carmel? Well, from uh, the Carmelite order, which uh, you may or may not have much experience with, uh, right now has uh, has always claimed its uh, founding from the Old Testament days and and even in the prayers of, that are associated with the Carmelite liturgy uh, the prophet Elijah is noted as really the founder of, of, of Carmelite spirituality and that just goes back to um, uh, Elijah becoming uh, a hermit having a eremitical presence on Mount Carmel. And even after the days of Elijah, there were, there were Jewish hermits who, who lived and prayed and maintained their idea of intimacy with God on Mount Carmel. And, and later on, um, probably after um, the Crusades had kind of come and gone um, between Europe and the Holy Land, um, a group of probably in about the 11th century or so, when it really got rolling, uh, there were a group of mostly European uh, Christians who then uh, decided to live in some of the caves and, and outcroppings on Mount Carmel and became this rather ragtag band of, of, of hermits. And when they began to coalesce in any shape or form, uh, they were they called themselves uh, the brothers of our lady or the brothers of Mary of Mount Carmel and so the two pillars of Carmelite spirituality go back to the Old Testament and Elijah but the other principal pillar of Carmelite spirituality is our Blessed Mother so uh, Elijah by history and our Blessed Mother by 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 reality the word Carmelite actually was pejorative because some of the old original orders, um, Benedictines, Dominicans, those groups, um, used to speak of this, this, this kind of disordered ragtag band of, of, of uh, hermits living on Mount Carmel and they called them those Carmelites, those, those ones from, from Carmel, and it's like, you know, those Carmelites. And, they realized, those, that group realized that they needed greater order and they needed to come together and be more, uh, more cohesive. And they asked um, Albert of Aragon, Albert the Great, uh, to, to write them a rule, which he did. And the rule of St. Albert became the rule by which, uh, by which they formed their communities mm -hmm. and lived. And they initially were, were aeromedical and even early on, more of a, uh, a group of uh, kind of cloistered men. The men later became more like the Franciscans, became more like mendicant friars, whereas the women that joined them later on became, uh, and most of them have remained uh, as cloistered uh, uh, convents of women. One of the, what happened by about the 13th century was, um, was that, um, the Saracens, uh, the um, uh, you know, an Islamist band, began to began to raid in the Middle East, and and most of the Christians were driven out, driven off of Mount Carmel, 
and because of that, most of the of the the um, the Carmelites that were on Mount Carmel returned to their place of origin. And most of them were in Europe, and there was one particular saint by the name of Simon Stock in the 1200s who uh, was an Englishman, and he came back to England from Mount Carmel, and he was desperate. He thought that this was the end of Mount Carmel. That that by by the the loss of their community on Carmel and their disbanding into this diaspora into Europe, that that the Carmelite uh, that the Carmelite ideal was gone, mm -hmm. and um, Stock eventually became the prior general of of all the Carmelites in 1254. But it was in 1251, July of 1251, when he had a vision of our Blessed Mother, and our Blessed Mother told him that you've always been my boys, you know, ever since you were called the brothers of, of um, my brothers on Mount Carmel, you've always, you've always been after my own heart. And she, she gave them, at the time, the brown scapular. And he, gave, and he saw the image of the brown scapular. And she says, this will become, become your, not only your habit, part of your habit, but this will show that, that, um, that you, this community not only is, is, is with me, but also that, that, um, that I, am, I am your protectress. I, I will pray for you, govern you, guard you. And, and I, give you, I give you my pledge through this brown scapular. And then she gave them promises with regard to what would happen if they wore the brown scapular. And Simon Stock then at that time preached the message and said, we're, we're gonna survive. Our Blessed Mother has told me we're gonna survive. And sure enough, the Carmelite Order not only survived, but, uh, but thrived and thrived well up in up until the 16th century when when parts of the community got kind of lax and that's when we see Teresa of Jesus and John of the Cross and, the, and that's another story of another day but 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 Carmel goes all the way back to Carmelites go all the way back to Mount Carmel and the story is beautiful the spirituality is is unbelievable and I spent six years of my life precious years of my life being steeped in the spirituality of, of Carmel, and you're never the same afterwards. So thanks be to God. Absolutely. So thank you for that story and that connection there with Mount Carmel and Elijah and the Carmelites. So anything else for the good of the order? I hope we're good for the day. I think. Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, yeah, let's just keep on in prayer of our families and our people. There's difficult situations happening this week, so. Um, our Lord will not abandon us. Well, so. Join us for a parking lot adoration tonight at 5 o'clock at the Grand Site, as well as confessions in there at 5. Yep. Mass at 9 a.m. Well, nope, those are, are, are filled. Yep. You want to give us a blessing to, before we turn us our, oh. ourselves off? Yep. The Lord be with you. With, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.